Hello everyone and welcome to Thursday Live Lessons here on ukuleleontheground.com. My name is Aldrin Guerrero, joined by our special guest, Mr. Magic Mike Odos. What's up, Mike? What's up, guys? <clears throat> also joined by, as per usual, Mr. Aaron, the voice, not from Mercy. What's up, Aaron? What's up? And Mr. Kahai, the legend, Fergin. Say what's up, Kahai? What's up? We are here. It's Thursday at 1 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. That means we get to answer any and all of your questions via email, via ukulele on the ground website and stuff, or via like live and stuff, because uh, we found ourselves traveling ourselves traveling a little bit this past weekend we were just uh at the sf summer uke fest we had a lot of fun kahai went out uh for the for the first time over to san francisco with us did you have fun kahai was it good yeah yeah it was really good yeah tell us tell us uh tell us about the festival because uh, i i want to hear your take on this on this festival Let's start out with that uh the festival was great i, mm. I really liked it um, yeah yeah like uh Saturday was a lot of fun where it's just like a bunch of people playing together, jam, mm -hmm. the open jam yeah. in the park. So on uh, on Saturday, we were in uh, Yerba Buena, was that? Yerba Buena. Yerba Buena Gardens. Yeah, Yerba Buena Gardens. Yeah, I just thought like, I know it's like the start of that Yerba Mate drink. <laughs> yeah, I kept calling it Yerba Mate. <laughs> it, it's like <laughs> either the Yerba or the Mata, but I don't <laughs> The Mate Buena. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so Yerba Buena Gardens, um, it was fun and stuff. And like uh, Cynthia and Lenny, uh, Uku Lenny and Cynthia Lin really know how to like, you know, get a crowd going and stuff. And especially mm -hmm. Lenny. Lenny is like the king of like... Of hype, <laughs> like yeah, call yeah, the hype. The, yeah. yeah. Whereas like Cynthia Lynn is is like the queen of like like hyping people like to you know to come to an event or to get hype for an event and stuff. Mm -hmm. Whereas Lenny on stage like he can really like bring it and stuff. So I I'm, I was really I was really impressed by the um, you know, by, by the team the the San Francisco ukulele festival team. Um, it wasn't just you know uh, Ukuleni and Cynthia. There's a you know a, a bunch of them just kind of working hard behind the scenes and stuff. But it worked out really nicely. That was one of my favorites too. We didn't do that last year, but I think they combined two different events. They have an event in the summer that they do called Explosion, which is that Yerba Buena Gardens event, and um, they so they combined it this year with uh, with the summer. They just call it the Summer Uke Fest because it used to be in October for the Uke Fest, but they now do it in the summertime, just at the same time as Uke Explosion. It was fun. It was fun. Um, <clears throat> I like that addition, and I like that jam better than. Um, that the last time that we were there, we were having a jam like kind of late at night with the, you know, yeah, with people and it was stuff. In a restaurant. Yeah, uh, the first time was in a restaurant and it was like it was okay, you know, like it was uh, it was it was fun. But I think that's just something that they normally have anyway. I think right, mm -hmm. like they, they have jams at Paina and stuff. So it didn't seem too special to some of the people that went there that that you know, that, I, that I talked to and stuff. The only um, the part that made it special was because we were there, Craig and Sarah, Abe, you know, like Stephen and stuff. So they had all these extra guests instead of just a being um cynthia and lenny and sometimes abe i guess so uh this one was uh was was pretty cool i, I liked it a lot yeah so. a lot of people yeah came out for that yeah that jam in the garden uh -huh. mm. it was it was awesome and uh they put together a nice uh you know a nice little uh set list of songs that people yeah. you know people like jamming to it was kind of like a combination of like a jam and also mm. performances because yeah. there's like some songs that weren't really like jam songs were more mm. performance songs so people yeah. could just sit back and watch and then other mm -hmm. times like Lenny or Cynthia would be like yeah. okay turn to page whatever in yeah. your book and so, we're all gonna play so I'm glad that. you brought that up because speaking of that we you know <clears throat> I secured a signed booklet so uh, at the summer youth fest they have um you know, they were they were giving up these booklets that had like all the songs that we were gonna be uh, we were gonna be playing like <laughs> Um, the lyrics and chords. the lyrics and chords and stuff. So something they took from uh, from Island Music Network, which, which I thought was funny. <laughs> that was that was pretty awesome. But um, it has it has that and it's signed by everybody. It's signed by Steven Espanola, Abe Lagrimis, uh, Craig and Sarah, uh, me and you know me and Aaron and Cynthia and Lenny. So it's like signed by all the uh, Uke Fest artists. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna be giving that away uh, tomorrow. I'm gonna be doing a little nice little giveaway tomorrow. So uh, if you come down to a little Friday Night Jam, you can have yourself. A, uh, a nice chance of winning a signed um, SF Summer Youth Fest jam book. All right. So, um, <clears throat> what else did you? Uh, what else did you like? Sorry, Mike. I know we'll, we'll get we'll get to you in a bit. We're just kind of recapping our weekend. Well, here. I mean, no, I love to hear about this because you know. Now it's my turn because you know you guys don't ever bring me to these. Things. Oh, <laughs> hey, hey. Oh, hi. You know, he's been uh, <laughs> he's been guys, waiting in line. <laughs> he's been waiting in line for a long time. So. 
You know what I mean? You got you got to wait and see my like Kahai did. Get my revenge. Here. Oh hey hey hey! <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, Kahai gets like a stomach ache before like before the trip. Ugh. Can't make it's it, like, guys. Can't make it, guys. And Mike's like, hey, I heard uh, Kahai could make it. <laughs> Pushing <laughs> off like the right, <laughs> right, 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 hiding the the bottle of. <laughs> well, like, of, of, uh, I of think. I, I think I'm like lactose intolerant, so it's just like you just gotta give me milk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, no, I can't make it. I'm it's trying to think what that's was that some what? of this non-dairy ice cream. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying hey, to think what was like that cool thing they did on the, the thing on Family Guy. What was that? Oh, Epicac. <laughs> <laughs> it's hiding the Epicac bottle behind guys' lunch. That's like that is terrible. Yeah. yeah. All right, so um, that was that was Saturday. Saturday was fun. I got super sunburned though. Like um. People are like, oh, here's uh, you know, here's like some sunscreen and stuff because it was mm-hmm. outside. It was an outside stage and stuff, I, and it was it was a sunny day in San Francisco, which I've never seen ever in my life. <laughs> it, it like really shows that Sarah's gonna be a good mom. Yeah, because like before, you know, like you guys start playing and everything, she like pulled out the sunscreen. And she's like, you guys need sunscreen? You need sunscreen? <laughs> yeah, I'm oh, Filipino sure you, lady. Make, like I, my skin is so dark. I don't think I'll ever get burnt. And bam, yeah, <laughs> like burnt. yeah, it was so itchy and so like. So so sore the entire weekend my neck the, uh, you know the back of my neck and it's like oh man it's I just don't tell any like just don't don't say anything because uh, Sarah's gonna be like see I, I tried to offer you some sunscreen and you're like no 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 I, I, I understand we just finished the other week was oh. our band camp for the mm. Kauai All Island band Ooh, marching oh mm. eight to five every oh, day man. Oh, man. <laughs> and even with sunscreen lots of us yeah, lots of burn, us have burn. some mm. burns. You gotta use that pink bottle with the baby on it. That's 50 SPF, man. 50. Mm-hmm. Mine is like cooling stuff and it's like 75. Oh, snap, <laughs> 75. Yeah. And you still got burnt? What? You guys are... So if, if there are any like... Wait, uh, look at Aaron. Federal agents that are like, oh, are they overworking those students right now? Oh, yeah, you do have a raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, raccoon right now. You can't see it in the camera, but I have the raccoon thing going. <laughs> Yeah, federal agent gonna come. Hey, how hard are you working these kids? Eight to five, huh? That's what we heard. <laughs> Listen to this podcast. Like they showed five. up of their own free will. <laughs> so you don't pay them? <laughs> All right. So um, what happened on Sunday, Kai? Sunday was like the workshops and stuff, mm-hmm. and then that like that day, like uh, Aaron was running around getting like videos and mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, but I just stayed at the booth, and mm-hmm. it was it was like still fun and. I think uh, I just posted, or I posted in the forum because uh, mm. Kavai what, like made a post in the forum too. Like, mm. oh, I can't wait to meet you guys. Yeah. So I just told them like, oh, it was like awesome hanging out with you guys and getting lunch, and mm-hmm. I think that was like my favorite part of yeah. San Francisco yeah, Youth Fest. It was really cool. Yeah. Like hanging awesome out with a bunch of you viewers. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was really cool because uh, uh, Mark and his wife came. Kavai, mm-hmm. um, Devin, Devin, John. John. Uh, Ritesh. Gary. Yeah, yeah, Ritesh was there. Gary, we saw. There's a lot of really cool, you know, like UU members that kind of came out and stuff. And, and we had lunch with some of them. Yeah, and a ton of people too who will just or who would come up and say like, I watched the jam or something, or I yeah. watched the the play alongs mm-hmm. and stuff. So that that was like pretty cool. Yeah, right, right. There's nice. like people who are like, oh. Mm-hmm. I know your voice from the jam, but I like I never see you. Yeah, so. yeah. People have to close their Except eyes. Except there was like, oh, that, that one guy Kai. I saw on the Instagram. Was the, fo- yeah, the oh picture. yeah, so that's Devin. Yeah, so Devin <laughs> made, these, uh, made these shirts. Yeah, like um, that has Kahai's face on it, doing a finger gun. Sing. <laughs> see you at the boardwalk. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Yeah, even um, we were riding around. Like Rudy was helping to shuttle us yeah. um, around in mm-hmm. his car. Yeah. And he was saying that it, it's pretty cool because he listens to the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like so shout out to Rudy and Julia. Like, <laughs> Kahai's voice is like right there <laughs> right in the backseat. Back yeah. back but there's Kahai actually a face a, attached yeah, to it now. Yeah. Yeah. It's like listening to a live podcast it's like, in my yeah. car. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. That, that Saturday, like I yeah. think we were just running. Me and Aaron were like running with camera equipment, and I know like John and Devin like stopped mm. both of us and were like. Are you? They stopped me and they're like, mm. "Are you Kahai?" Like, because they weren't sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, "Oh yeah." And then like I and then I was like, "Oh, what? What's your username?" I I think I knew Devin because like I've seen Devin a yeah. few times. But then mm. for John, I was like, "Oh, what's what's your username? Who are you on the site?" And he's like, "Oh, I'm John. You know, John Holland." And I'm like, "Oh yeah, I I totally know who you are. I just never <laughs> seen you before." 
So that was, I think that was the coolest part of uh, mm-hmm. the SFU Fest mm-hmm. for me is meeting nice. people. Nice. And, yeah, it's great. Yeah, so it was, uh, I, I had a good time. I mean, it was, it, it's always fun. Those, you know, all those guys are my friends and stuff. And it's always a good time whenever we all get together and, and, and whatnot. And uh, uh, Lenny's a blast, you know, he's, um, it, it's kind of cool because Lenny is like, He's Filipino, but he's like born in you know in, in the mainland. But he's like studied enough Filipino and has hang, hung out yep. with enough Filipino people that like I can just kind of like riff with uh, with with Lenny and, like in some mm-hmm. Filipino kind of like uh, like accents and like and jokes mm-hmm. and stuff. And mm-hmm. so there's like so there's Abe too. Yeah, so it's Abe kind of too. Funny. So it's uh it's it's funny. rare that I get to like rib with like <laughs> you know with fellow Filipinos. <laughs> yeah. which is really cool. Cause uh, why are all these Filipino people so good at ukulele? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> like, what happened in the <laughs> Philippine history that they? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Well, we saw the Japanese people do it. I was like, hey, we can't just let Ota and Shimabukuro yeah, <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah. Fujigamis. Fujigamis, <laughs> yeah. It's, now we're, we're gonna have to mix in a little Guerreros and the in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> San Jose is, yeah. you know. So we gotta mix it in. Yeah, you guys, you guys like were. Like going off, right? Like we went to get boba and we're walking back to the hotel, yeah. and it's just like I, I just imagine like it's like there's people walking by, like what is, is there like a a meet meet up with like a Filipino community meet up or something? Because these guys like are the high school Filipino club, yeah, <laughs> like, to have like these guys they like, all have accents, <laughs> yeah, and, and like or I don't know if people you guys are saying some stuff mm-hmm. as I'm not Filipino, but I was like. Oh my gosh! This feels like home. It feels like <laughs> feel like my uncle telling me something. You know, yeah. it's like oh man. Yeah. Well, what was really fun is that you know just hanging out, hanging out with friends and stuff, and it's uh, yeah, it's always it's always good when mm-hmm. whenever you have friends around and whatnot. So uh, I'm I was very happy to to uh, to see a bunch of you folks. Like we said, you know, a lot of you you um, you members were there, and we loved hanging out with you guys. Um, kind of sticking around and talking story as well. I know uh, Kahai was hanging out at the booth. A bunch of you folks came by and say hi to said hi to Kahai and stuff. Yeah, um, I, mm-hmm. like I, I think the cool thing too is that like I think a bunch of them were meeting each other for the yeah. first time. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's, and, that's true. Yeah, and so like when we got lunch, it seemed like they were also like talking to each other yeah. and getting to know each other mm-hmm. better. So hopefully, like you know, they can kind of say like, mm-hmm. oh. That's like my friend who, yeah. you know, like I've kind of known online, but mm-hmm. I got to meet for the first mm-hmm. time. I know like Mark and Priya were saying that they're walking around and people were stopping them being like, are you Mark and Priya? Like, you guys <laughs> yeah, post that video. Can, and yeah. I love that video with your daughter. It's so uh-huh. cute, you know. So that was like, to me, that was pretty cool. That was, yeah. that was a high. That yeah. was they're getting high recognized idea. in their own right. Yeah, because it just reminds me of like old school Kulala Underground, you know? Like when mm-hmm. we just had the forums and stuff and everybody was like collaborating and sharing all their like yeah. videos and stuff. And then, um, you know, you would have people at festivals kind of like meeting up with each other. And, yeah. and, then, uh, and then things like, uh, like the one in Indiana, what is that thing called? Um, the... UWC, like uh-huh. you know, like um, Ukula World Conference at UWC. All these people from like Ukula on the ground, like like finally meeting each other. So it's kind of like uh, it just reminds me of that in like on a you know on a smaller scale. But it's pretty cool because I think you know the more we uh, the more we kind of go out and, uh, and and meet a bunch of you folks, the more we can kind of come back to that old school like feel of like Ukula on the ground. Yeah. Uh, on Sunday, we we went out for ramen with like mm-hmm. a bunch of you know people. Mm-hmm. And I said, like, this is the first ever, uh, first ramen, ukulele underground ramen meetup. <laughs> yeah. But it really is. Like, that'd be cool if we could do that more yeah. often with mm-hmm. more people from other places, too. Yeah. Just, like, wherever. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, that was that was our festival. It was a lot of fun. Uh, thanks for coming down for all of you folks who came down. Thank you so much. We'll see you folks on, uh, on the next one. I don't know if we have any other uh, festivals, um, you know, for the rest of the year. Uh, but... You know, definitely. If we do have, we'll we'll let you guys know. But next year, we'll we'll be in a you know in a bunch of festivals as well. So we'll have other chances to kind of meet up and, and hang out. Okay. All right. So uh, let's get down to business. Uh, Kai, do we have any questions? Uh, we actually, yeah, I, I okay. forgot about like this this okay. one, um, but it's a few different topics talking mm-hmm. about uh, from George. So he said. Uh, next week's live lesson, can you discuss uh, muting the top string on chord inversions over playing the full chord? And uh, he has like several different topics, so I'll just start with that, I okay. think. Yeah. 
Uh, say it again. Can you discuss muting the top string on chord inversions? So like playing with your, like you your thumb that, right? oh, over. Oh, like um, like C over here or something. Yeah. Like, instead of playing the the G. Oh, um, <clears throat> that's just for ease and stuff. And there's some like chord shapes. It just depends on the shape. So for example, a G chord shape is one that I like to use a lot. It's something that we you know as ukulele players use a lot anyway, right? So this this chord shape right here. Um, but this chord shape can move up and down, and I don't want to change the chord shape to something like this. Because this will be the full chord shape with the you know with the top string in it, and uh, moving this just isn't as versatile for me because uh, I'm only kind of left with my pinky finger to do uh, to to do stuff. Because this using my pointer finger here as a bar kind of takes that out. Maybe I can do things with my you know with my ring and, and, and middle finger as well. But this kind of allows me to hit the chord and kind of go into different pickings as well. Go into like a. Um, what is the uh, five mode? Mixolydian. Mixolydian. I can do. I have a mixolydian scale <laughs> from uh, from that chord shape. So if I'm <clears throat> if I'm doing that, I can do a mixolydian scale. You know, from uh, from there. But if I do this, say it'll be like it's not as a uh, it's not as effective because this allows me to go straight into like kind of picking mode. This I have to. Uh, to kind of keep my pointer finger there. So there's just some, you know, that's that is one of the many reasons why uh, why I do that instead of playing the full chord. I know for a lot of you low G users, um, playing the full chord is pretty much the only thing you can do unless you, you know, you, you mute the top as well. But since that low gets so um, overbearing that if you like, if you go up here and you miss that, um, you know, you miss the, uh, the mute, it'll really stick out. But if I miss this mute here, it's not really that big of a problem for me, okay? Because you're you're using high G. Yeah, high G. So it, like, even here, you know, it's just not it's not that bad, all right? Um, another. But you mute it anyway, <clears throat> right? I do. But if I miss it, just just in, you know, uh, just, just in case, it's not that you. bad. Yeah. Um, other uh, other ones that I like to uh, that I like to do that too are like A minor, uh, G minor. So basically, anything that. Um, that has the chord on just the bottom three strings, I like to uh, take out that top string right there. And that's mainly the reason why, is because I like to keep the shape the same instead of like, because I'm not gonna go C, and then go to this G, and then go to this F. You know, I go from this C to this G to this F. I wanna keep that same thing here, you know? So that's where I would do that, that chord shape for the F, because C, G, F, that's that shape. You know, I want to keep the shapes all the same so I don't confuse myself. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of where where if they're like more used to two barring like yeah. the full chord shape, yeah. they probably would just play the full chord shape anyways because mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. what they're used to. Yeah. Kinda. It's just kind of keeping this, uh, things the same here so that whatever it is that you do as far as riff wise or picking and stuff, you can still go like go into it without having to change the, uh, the shape itself. Yeah. And, and it's it. Like there is like kind of tiny benefit pros and mm. cons right to each, yeah. But then really it's like a flavor or it's like up to you, yeah. More yeah, 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 yeah. personal. Okay, preference. next. Uh, there's so, a list of them. Yeah. So he also asked if we could talk about playing while wearing jewelry. Mm. So. Just... How about you tackle this one, Mike? Playing while wearing jewelry. <laughs> Seems like you are the kind of guy who. Uh... <laughs> who would have <laughs> <a> problem? <laughs> My green lantern <laughs> rings in the shop. So. <laughs> Um, in the darkest of night, no, what is the, what is the, uh, oh, the brightest it? day in black is night. No, you yeah. shall escape my sight. So those who <clears throat> worship evil's might be my power, green lantern's light. Good answer. <laughs> that, was, that was impressive. That, well, that, earlier, before we started shooting, we, uh, we settled the debate of who is broke here. <laughs> And it's Mike by like no, no, it's Mike. <laughs> it's Mike. no we decided I was nerdier. Yeah, nerdier. There's yeah. definitely a difference. Yeah. I've known Mike for a long time. I don't think I've ever questioned if I was, <laughs> I think, you were more nerdier than he is. Yeah, no, I yeah. I've had a head start. <laughs> Are you, yeah. Are you kidding me? Mike is like Yoda to me. Right? <laughs> I see his image in the. the All clouds. right, so uh, let's go over like some jewelry. I mean, for myself, it's it's my ring. You know, so my ring. Every time I kind of go up and stuff, it does like crack around here, and that, that's just something like that I've learned to live with. I mean, you know, I'm not gonna take off my uh, take off my ring whenever I play. That's just more chances of me losing it, and I don't want to lose my ring. You know, look, I'll just wear it and I'll just uh, you know count the um, 
the little like dings on the um on the body just as a um what you call it like, just not collateral damage yeah, i guess collateral damage you know <laughs> with, uh, with with how i play and stuff but that's just it's gonna be character you know i, I now well to be, fa- of... to be fair i mean they're small dents yeah they're... it's not like you're cracking no, through the no, side no, or something no. like that no and um yeah, it's not it's not a big deal. I mean, to me, it's not not really too big of a deal and stuff. Uh, it does give character because a bunch of my ukes are like kind of scratched up and dented and whatever. Right. If I cared about my ukes not being scratched or dented, then I wouldn't play it so hard, you know. Like, or I would definitely <laughs> you would like play it like you play. Yeah, I would, exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but other jewelry like maybe like a long chain or necklace and stuff might kind of hang on that. I don't know. Like that doesn't Put matter. Your shirt. Put it inside your shirt. Yeah. I'm There's... kind of more of the that type of person who just doesn't like. First of all, I don't wear jewelry in in general. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I don't like wearing anything really mm-hmm. that either hangs or gets mm-hmm. in the way. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's why I don't wear rings. Mm-hmm. I I can't I can't play. Mm-hmm. You know I I probably could because as a bass player I hold either playing upright or I'm playing electric. Mm-hmm. A ring here at the base of my finger really wouldn't get in the way. Mm-hmm. But. Also, one thing, and this goes back to actually something we talked a long time ago about. Mm-hmm. When you warm up your hands to play, it actually expands. Mm-hmm. Your hands expand and yeah. your fingers expand because there's lots of blood rushing into those muscles. Mm-hmm. So unless your ring is actually fit to that size of yeah. your finger, it can, like, if you really True. start going, you yeah, can start yeah. to feel it getting tighter Tight. and tighter. Mm-hmm. And you probably, and, and you might not know why, mm-hmm. but, you know, that's, that's what's mm-hmm. Necklaces. Anything? No, absolutely not. Because I, I just don't want to ever like burn and <laughs> yeah. whack in the strings. Yeah. I can't even play. I mean, unless you're going like Mardi Gras and you have like all these you know, like beads and stuff that's hanging over. I mean, most necklaces kind of stop right here. And that, if we're playing ukulele, it's kind of far. Yeah. Or lays. I can't. Oh, yeah, lays. Yeah, I lays can't play with a lay on <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I have to kind of like pull the lay back so that the lay kind of goes like put the, the, the worst. Stand. The worst yeah, one. Yeah, or on the mic stand. Exactly. The worst yeah. one is if I get a lay before I'm supposed to. Play. So, like, my bass is on a stand mm-hmm. and someone gives me a lay, I, I just have to take it off. <laughs> because I know that yeah. the instant I put the strap on over, I'm going right. to demolish half that leg. Yeah. 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 You know? That, that was like, that was actually something at uh, like San Francisco Youth Fest, right? Mm. Before you guys played, Cynthia mm. was like, do you guys want these lays <laughs> like because yeah. you guys are gonna have to take it off anyways right mm-hmm. so like it was like uh oh, we'll just leave this back here this is for you guys anyways afterwards <laughs> but most most times nowadays if i get a lay before i'm playing for something i usually have like a mic stand or a music stand in front of me mm-hmm. i'll just take it off i'll hang it on that yeah to me that's that you know because it actually makes the mic stand look nicer mm-hmm. and it gets gets it out of the way because i think it looks even w- some people are like, oh, but you, you take it off right after you put it on and then no, it looks bad. It's no. like, you know what will look worse? If I put my strap on and half the lay is the <laughs> on the stage. No, yeah. Or, yeah. or you put, <clears throat> like, if it's a nice flower lay and then you, you have to tuck it underneath your base and your base is smashing it against <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like, so it's, a, it's like mm, my lay is shedding petals yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then I was like, well, you know, if I if I do this, at mm-hmm. the very least, then I can take it with me and it's still mm-hmm. nice at the end of the gig, mm-hmm. yeah. you know. Yeah. But I... What yeah. other kind of um, uh, most often worn jewelry? Like earrings shouldn't be a problem. So earrings I'm, shouldn't I'm, be a problem. You know, how about like... Yeah, um, rings, I, 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 I say, earrings I say like rings and three. necklaces. Things that go around your mm-hmm. neck and rings. Some, and it depends on kind of ring you have. Yours is actually not... It's not that bad. Because mm-hmm. if you look at it, it it's relatively form-fitting. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have like a big jewel on it or something. Mm-hmm. Anything that would stick out. That's, mm-hmm. that's kind of what you don't want. Mm-hmm. Because even when you do that thing with the the neck and you and you hear that your ring yeah. whack the the base yeah. of the neck, the thing is, there's no chance that that's gonna stop your hand from moving somewhere else. No. If you have like a big old like fat baller ring yeah. or something like that, you know, there's a chance. What if like if you have NBA the thing with like a big ring. yeah? <laughs> well, if you have something like that, what's it? You you could run the chance of getting that stuck in your string or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, weird. Um, I realize that sounds weird, but okay. It so, what about like uh, putting rings on your right hand, your strumming hand? Like, I've never done that and stuff, but I'm guessing it's not like loose enough for it to like come off if you're like doing this a lot and stuff. Um, you know, like again, once you've warmed up, it'll yeah. actually make the ring tight on your finger. So True. probably yeah. not. Um, at I, your speed, maybe I don't no, know. Because I, I see Jake like with a with a pointer finger ring. He has a mm-hmm. ring on his pointer finger on his strumming hand. It's, That's true. It's strumming, yeah, I think this is another strumming hand. And so I mean, and okay. it could it could be any yeah. of those things. Uh, it would be the my my worry about a ring on your mm-hmm. strumming hand would be the same thing as a as one of my picking hand for my bass mm-hmm. is that I don't want to hit the sh- unless I'm 
purposely doing it. Yeah. I don't want to hit the string with the ring because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that would definitely be a catch. weird. It will catch on yeah, it, yeah. Make a yank it off sound. my finger, yeah. Yeah. make a weird noise, yeah. any number yeah. of those things. If I'm going to make weird noises with my instrument, it's going to be on purpose. Yeah. So good to go. No, not a problem. Jewelry, not a so, problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's something that like I I like to wear, but I definitely have to take off before I try to play. Mm-hmm. Is a watch. Like, mm. and somebody just mentioned that too in the chat is what about when you wear a watch? Do you have to take it off or do you feel I like, don't. I mean, watches you usually wear in your left hand, right? And it doesn't really get in the way and stuff. Sometimes, uh, I, sometimes I need a watch back then I needed a watch to, uh, to kind of know what, like how long we've been playing and what time we're going to yeah. end and stuff. It kind of gives me cues on, uh, you know, during the show of when to play certain songs and stuff, but, um, it did get kind of heavy. I guess mm-hmm. because we play for like two or three hours at a time, so it got a little heavy. I guess I could wear like a lighter, you know, a lighter watch and stuff, but now I just use my phone. But it wasn't too big of a problem. It wasn't like... I think it's also the same answer in, mm-hmm. in the only the only thing that a watch or a bracelet mm-hmm. of some kind... Yeah. Well, bracelet would be different. Yeah, bracelet bracelets would be different. hang okay, loose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bracelet on your right hand... That is a no. You, you're, definitely, right. you're definitely running the chance of getting that hung up in your string. Mm. Um, or like... or Like cracking yeah, your, you know, yeah. the top of the ear. Um, the only thing I would also say is, again... When your wrist expands from warming up, mm. you know, if you wear a watch, one people say it, it it feels like it's constricting. Well, that's because it is it's because your wrist is expanding. Tighter. So it's getting tighter, and that's mm-hmm. why a lot. I mean, a lot of people just take it off for that. Mm-hmm. They don't even yeah. think like, oh, mm-hmm. I'll I'll just put it down one notch. Yeah, yeah. they just take it off. Which yeah. I that's what I do. I put it down one notch. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When it comes to also, I am one of those people when it comes to performance. I don't like to have something on that would randomly. Mm-hmm. Like draw attention, huh. and and I, watch it, I, I and I, anybody <laughs> I like who is well, okay, Mike. anybody who, yeah, but you're the star. I love attention. Again, this is another thing Kai would remember. I used to wear anytime like, long we, finger armor we, rings yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Like, come on. We he you would remember that before master. any concert, any performance, <laughs> halftime, whatever. Mm-hmm. I would say if you have watches, rings, take them all off. Take them all off. What? Yeah, I used to wear like these like these leather necklaces and stuff. Well, like it used to be yeah. for marching band. I, I remember we would take it all off too, because you don't want to be marching or you don't want to be doing something, and then it falls off. You know, like mm-hmm. if it's a loose spring or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And if you ain't stopping to pick That's it true. up. Yeah. That's true. If if you stop to pick it oh, off, no. you're, you're getting kicked off the field. So like <laughs> yeah. you just gotta leave it there, and yeah. that that ring is it. gone yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. All right. So next. Or, or the, um, that that too. Like I actually do wear a watch on my right hand. Oh yeah, when you play. Uh, no, right and I like wearing watches on my right hand. Mm-hmm. I just wear that's where I wear my watch when mm-hmm. I have to choose, mm-hmm. and I wear like a heavy watch, like mm-hmm. a, a metal watch. Yeah. So, so I take it off because I feel like it kind of causes drag. Like, mm-hmm. I, and with my right hand, that could mm-hmm. be true. You know, if yeah. it, if it's a big heavy, like yeah, a big old does. like yeah. nice watch. You know that's gonna slow down your strumming hand. Yeah, and so I just feel like oh, I I play more naturally with unless you so. unless you go full Rock yeah. Lee on it and just <laughs> yeah, just keep doing it until it's not heavy anymore. Um, All right, yeah, yeah. If it hinders your playing, then don't remove it. Remove it. <laughs> that's, Simple as that. I yeah, guess. yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Next yeah. up. and you can just put it in your pocket and then until mm-hmm. afterwards or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um. So they they said George also asked, uh, can you talk about using an E string pull off instead of a G? While playing a low G to replicate ghost notes without the boomy bass, you can. But um, the the E is so close to the uh, you know so close to the A that you might want to use it for um, what if what if. So let me just let me just say like what if you're doing a pull off going down the scale and stuff. If you're using your E to do that. It you know, clashes. Just, it clashes, more. right? So um, that kind of G-string pull-off technique might work if you're keeping, you know, the uh, the melody lines on A, uh, but that pretty much limits it, and that's why I wouldn't really use the E. I, you, I would if uh, if it doesn't go any lower than the A note, then it can work, yes. But um, I also reserve the string to harmonize the A string. So if I'm doing stuff like a like I couldn't do that. I would just have single notes. And you're like, well, well, you wouldn't do uh, double notes when, uh, you know, when you're doing the G string pull off anyway. And that's uh, that's not necessarily true because because you can uh, you can definitely do that with the double strings. Yeah, it's more yeah. of a high G 
technique yeah. anyway.、Mm-hmm. So if you're playing low G, you'd probably be playing something、yeah. different, like a right, different right. style, Some, something else. Because、yeah. it's it's from like banjos, I guess you know it's from a banjo、mm-hmm. technique because the banjo also has a re-entered string on it, and that's kind of where it comes from that technique. Um, so in this case, if you have a if you have a low G using the E, you might be、uh, you know you might be able to get away with on some songs and stuff, but it's not it wouldn't be your. I think that's、yeah. thing, plus yeah. your your thumb has to be a lot more accurate. Yes, yes, you know? that's、yeah. that's like definitely like a, a question that we get where it's like people say, how can I have my low G、yeah. but play a high G song right like <laughs> and not have to right, change right. or something. But the the real answer is like ah you you kind of do know. have to change yeah, have yeah. To change. yeah. and it, it's so you're saying Kai they can't have their cake and eat it <laughs> oh, <laughs> you can if you have two ukuleles <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 that's the, the answer the, the <laughs> simple answer, answer is have、yeah. two ukuleles yeah. like strung up different right I mean like I、yeah. I couldn't do things like low G people yeah you know, do yeah. Like, with my high G ukuleles、yeah. so it, it's one of those things like but I I try it anyway like in in Europa for example like. I do a、um, a Malagueña intro, and the Malagueña intro,、um, I do this. I just kind of sort of make that work, but that's not the note. It goes low. It's low. But you're. Sound like, you guys have a low. Is there a low G here? Ancient. I have my flute. Okay. I'm、um, gonna be like a guitar. Guitar. Oh, yeah. The flute low G. Yeah. Okay. So it was supposed to sound like this. Yeah. And it's like does not sound like that at all. But I'm like, ah, it'll do. It'll pass. <laughs> it'll it'll well, pass yeah. because yeah,、Good、there's、pass. some things that you know, Logi can't do. So this is what it sounds like on mine. Yeah, it's just different. It just yeah, it doesn't yeah. sound like it, it at all. And I think you can. There are workarounds for like、mm-hmm. going、mm-hmm. either way, right? Yeah. But it kind of is like that compromise that you have to make, where it's like probably gonna get you. Maybe like seventy percent of the、yeah. way there, and it's not gonna get you the full hundred percent of, you know, doing the exact、yeah. like G string pull off. So、right. the E string is is it it's an option, but it's not gonna be、mm-hmm. exactly what you know the、mm-hmm. kinds of things that you、yeah. can do with a. It's kind of like I have an alto sax, but I want to play just like Kenny G. Yeah, yeah, not quite. Not not gonna happen. Not, not,、uh, not really. Not happen. If, yeah, like, I mean, you can play the tune, but. <laughs> It, it will be missing like the tonal characteristics.、Yes. What, what if I try really hard though? What if I grow my hair out really long <laughs> and then perm it? <laughs> then can I sound like Kenny G? Like, what if I just? I would love just to see the long hair part. What if I take my alto sax and I cut it down <laughs> and make it smaller? Yeah. Okay, next up.、Uh, that and then that was it from、uh, George. So yeah, okay, cool. So I have、uh, I have a thing for you know for my since we have Mike here, our resident expert at、um, music theory and such and music in、yeah. general. So、uh, over the weekend, I get scared、uh, when he says stuff. No, like I, I'm excited、yeah. for this. Not, this, is, this is gonna be fun. I think、question. I think you're gonna like this. Okay. Gonna like. So over the weekend,、um, we had we had the absolute delight of a chance to、uh, to hear the new trio of ukulele, Cynthia Lynn. And Abe Lagrinas. Okay. They arranged some pretty amazing songs, which I thought was like, okay, what he nearly cares. I was like, all right, like how how good could that could that get? It's like G and C, G and C、mm-hmm. for like a minute or something. It goes.、Uh, <laughs> so for those of you folks who don't know, I'll, I'll show you the songs so, because you know it's going to be instrumental to working on it. So it goes like this.、Uh, So it's like G and C for for a lot, and it goes. Wahine ilikea ikapoli o moloko i no kaheke. Yeah, and then it goes to the G seven to the next part. So for a long time, this is G and C, G and C. So when they announced we're gonna play with Wahine ilikea, I was like, okay, cool, standard, you know, like standard. Not that I was saying ah,、oh, this is gonna be junk or whatever. I was like,、oh, okay,、mm-hmm. so standard, right? I know this song goes G C G C G C G C for a long time. It goes to five. It's not even it doesn't even go to a, to an interesting chord. It goes like <laughs> we're gonna end it now. We're tired of D.、Uh, we're tired of G and C. But A Lagrimas arranged it. Arranged、yeah. it. In a way that like blew our minds, I my mind was so blown I couldn't even <laughs> concentrate on what they were doing. Yeah, it just yeah, sounded yeah. so cool that I just basked in that moment. I'm like,、yeah. let me just enjoy.、It. I don't want to like break it down and stuff <laughs> to like you know because 
Because that'll be that'll just take the joy out of it. Because I was in pure joy. I'm like, that sounds so good. Like for once, you know, in a, in a long time, I'm like, I'm hearing something completely new and very, very, very enjoyable. Yeah. Now, Even though you yeah. totally knew the song. Yeah, I knew the song. Yeah, I knew I where the song was supposed to what? go, but he went somewhere somewhere completely different. Uh, and it Cynthia still Lin, sounded good. Yeah, Cynthia Lynn was singing the song. She sang the same exact notes as far as melody line goes. The melody didn't change at all. It was still <laughs> note for note, same thing. But the background chords changed. What would you do if you were Abe Lagrimus? What would you do to those G C G C G C G C G D to make it so that you don't get bored? Okay. It was the first time was was normal. What was the Lenny G- playing? Do he, uh, was he, was he playing, playing bass? He's playing bass. He's playing bass. Mm-hmm. He's playing bass. Yeah. He's playing, so for and yeah. what was Abe playing? Drums. Ukulele. ukulele. Okay. So Cynthia so, was so playing I think ukulele. It was, and, I think it was Abe's ukulele that gave the chords the characteristics okay. yeah that. so what i mean i'm not i'm not asking for exactly what he did but what would you do to now you know if if you were the abe of that band how would you arrange it so that it sounded like it sounded something different, different? yes should we grab the whiteboard like do you need no 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 no, 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 no. we just we just like uh because because uh, he's not asking for me to uh, rehome it so uh, okay yes. so it's two things okay Happening here. So the con- so the thing what he's Thursday doing. Thursday lesson starts now. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing he's doing is what they call reharmonization. Okay. He it's basically taking the chords that make up a song, mm-hmm. not changing the melody, but changing the chords underneath it to give it a new feel, a new sound, something like that. Mm-hmm. It's usually still based off of the original chords, mm-hmm. which leads us back to an episode many months ago. Which is called chord substitutions. Yes. So, what can you do with it? Well, the mm. first thing you can, the first thing you do is you use the rules of chord substitution, and and play with it. Mm-hmm. You know, you you kind of figure out, mm. okay, well, what am I doing? What okay. can I do here? So, for example, mm. um, the chords are G then C. Yeah. yeah. Right. So what? So, so, so here's a weird one. Mm-hmm. I, I I wouldn't okay. normally do this. Okay. But what play it? Mm. Uh, you going from G up to C, right? Yeah. Um, do G and A minor. Yeah. Now try sing it playing that. Okay. You know, it's all he's doing. All Abe was doing was just listening to the way the song right. was, and think, what can I do to mm. the chords to make them more interesting? Mm. Because one, well, sorry to cut you off, but one of the things that I thought about is like the minor major kind of, you know, like relativeness and stuff. Mm-hmm. But it sounded like it was beyond that. So I was thinking, like, is it just like well, that might sound that's that, something like that actually kind of sounded like what they were doing, but it sounded it sounded a little bit more than that. that yeah. I think that's where it started going, but then yeah. it, it went like into a completely different direction so, from there. The thing with chord substitution, it's not it, it is not and doesn't have to be like a mm. one for one exchange. Mm. So if you were to do the G okay. to the A minor, you don't have to do back to G. Yeah, because I went to the B minor from because uh, exactly. B minor is the so if you think about G, yeah, right. Well, if you think of if you, the notes of G are G, B, and D, right? Right, right. So if you go B, D, and G, almost like ah. a chord inversion you actually end up with a B minor chord. Mm-hmm. And then the same thing for the next one up there, You what'd you go for to? I went to uh, C major seven. Okay. So mm-hmm. I went G regular mm-hmm. to the A minor, to the B minor, mm-hmm. to the C major. And so seven. the C is the the chord you were using anyway, except you just added the extensions on Yeah, yeah the seven. So you could, you could even add on top of those other chords too, like whatever ninths mm-hmm. and Exactly. Whatever, whatever else. Exactly. Also, what you're doing is you're creating mm. like uh, an ascending line mm. yeah. with that. So you basically do a G, what, A, B, what, and C. Yeah, what it sounded he, like. He yeah. did it at one point. Yeah. And then he also did a descending. It was so sick. Yeah. It was just, <laughs> like all Because well, here's, a, here's a little thing. We were backstage. And it was me, Aaron. Cr- oh, not backstage. We were like in the back of the room, like listening to them play. It was me and Aaron and Steven Espanol and Craig Chi. And all of us were like, what just yeah. happened? No, Something happened. No, the thing is that <laughs> Craig yeah. heard them do the, do it um, in, during, during the sound check. Yeah. And nobody else was there. <laughs> and Craig was like, did anybody else hear that? <laughs> and so when they did it during the concert, yeah. 
He was like, I know, right? <laughs> oh my, I, just, I wanted to it talk to so somebody sick. about this so it badly. So <laughs> yeah. It was so, so if sick. anybody was at the San Francisco Fest, <laughs> please put a video of this up on YouTube so I can see it. Because uh, <laughs> I also thought, like, because um, we talked about the you know um, court substitutions and stuff, thought about maybe going minor, like a, you know, like a minor, a minor way to could it, could I go from G to C minor to D minor? Or, or, you could uh, not D minor, but Wahine Ilikea. So that like that kind of sounded more like what what happened. Yeah, yeah, because it sounded like that kind of well, thing. Like, like whoa. They kind of built up to it, right? Yeah. Like so. At first, it was like a little bit of they're yeah. like they're throwing in like some stuff, and then yeah, like and it went. It, just it was went like nuts. Oh, whoa! This is like not the same song yeah. anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, that's a, that's one thing. You, again, chord substitution is not mm. a one for one thing. Mm-hmm. So if I replace the C with an A, a minor, yeah, okay, so that doesn't cool. mean every time I have to do that. Yeah. Mm. Every single time I come to the next chord, mm. I can substitute it for whatever I want. Mm. Now. That being said, proper use of mm-hmm. reharmonization tells it's basically like you're telling the same story mm-hmm. with different side characters. Mm-hmm. All right. So it's, you know, it, it, I realize that's not the best way to explain it, but think about it in the it's like you're telling Goldilocks and the three bears, right. but you're telling it in like a modern, mm-hmm. it's not in a forest anymore. It's in like, I don't know Harlem in New York or something like that. Oh. The story is now the the story is still the same. However, some of the scenery has changed, which does change mm. certain things about it. Mm. You know, the the, <laughs> the juxtaposition of, it, yeah. of the chords to the melody yeah. that's changing, mm-hmm. even though the melody really isn't changing. Right, it's still the same story. It's still the same story. Mm-hmm. So when you're reharmonizing any song, yeah. you have to realize that you. You're trying to tell the same story in a different way. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't have to be a one-for-one one change. Matter of fact, like most good music, mm-hmm. it should grow. Mm-hmm. It should grow in intensity. There should be some tension. There should be some release. There should be all these things that make the story interesting to listen to. Yeah, And that's more than likely, Abe, whatever you did, I'm sure it was cool. Because <laughs> yeah. you're pretty much a genius pretty with this cool, type of man. stuff. It was so good. And but that's but that's really what A was trying to do. Yeah. He was trying to tell a different story. Mm. He was changing the chords yeah. to keep the integrity of the melody, mm. but at the same time, mm. get you to feel almost a different way. Mm. You know, okay, hear different things. So, um, so let's. How about we? You know, we uh, we kind of break down for the audience. So it was just G C G C G C. So what we're doing, uh, what what we did on that first one was instead of uh, going from G and C, we went G to A minor, mm-hmm. and then we talked about going to B minor because uh, you're supposed to go back to G, but uh, A that would, that would minor. That stack up correctly. Yeah. So B minor. Uh, I use B minor because usually people are like, isn't E minor the the uh, the chord? Um, what you call the, like the relative uh, the relative minor? But um, I'm thinking of it because I'm gonna go to the C major seven. I thought about the G major seven, which is closer to a B minor than right. you know than a than an E minor. So well, you, you know you can do the major minor swap, but yeah. remember that the other one we talked about in the in the substitution mm-hmm. was taking those as many of those notes as possible mm-hmm. and seeing what are the chords they can make up. Yeah. So if you look at a G major chord and a mm. B minor chord, really there's two of the three notes are the same. Mm-hmm. So that in of itself is like, you know, if you have if you're doing a three note chord, a tri chord, and two out of the three are the same, you can probably move to that. Yeah. And it's fine. You know? Yeah. And it works in Ukulele too, because I think on the B minor here. Uh, and, and it's great because we just talked about, you know, um, inversion chords where I mute the top, but I'm not going to mute the top. I'm going to keep the G here and get the um, the, the D, the, uh, the B, and the F sharp. So it's more like a G major 7 because it has a G. So it's G, F sharp, B, and D. Mm-hmm. So although it is a B minor chord shape, and I would think of it as a B minor, it's actually great as a G major seven. Mm-hmm. So it's like going from G to A minor to G major seven to the C major seven. Mm-hmm. But it sounded like he put like a minor in there. Well, so, also, you, also as you're saying, you listen to the top note of the voicings mm-hmm. you're using; yeah. they're ascending as well. Yeah, yeah. Going on. So uh, if if we were to do that, singing goes. Uh, mm-hmm. 
Now let's try the the minor uh, the mm -hmm. minor stuff. So instead of a G to C, let's try G to C minor, mm -hmm. and then to G minor, because it goes back to G, right? right? So G C G, and then it's to C minor. Okay. Oh, that sound. <laughs> I think we were onto something here. <laughs> <laughs> No, God, okay. it's it like totally it totally changes, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like so. What we did so G C G C G C. We took the minor, so G major to a C minor, to a G minor, to a C minor here. So if we were to sing the same line for Cynthia Lining, it goes. So I think it's a combination of the two. Yeah. I think it's definitely com maybe you went from G to C minor. I think that C minor is definitely the, the second chord. But maybe to that, you know, to that. Yeah. Or maybe an E minor. Let's try E minor because that's a direct minor mm -hmm. substitution. So it goes. Yeah, yeah that's that sounds good. good too. But it's stuff like that that just really tripped me out because I was not expecting it. I was like, oh, okay, well, he really care, I guess. GC, GC, GC for like a long time. <laughs> now, the cool part is that it does, one, it, it is the same song. Like, mm -hmm. it's not like you don't recognize mm -hmm. the song. Mm -hmm. It's the thing that just makes your ears kind of perk up and like, yeah. oh, hey, yeah. that is, yeah. you know. And yeah. it, and that, that was the thing too that it was tactful. It yeah, wasn't, yeah, yeah, It didn't detract from no, the song itself. No, 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 because the melody was still the same. Abe is a very tactful man. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. you know, so the, yeah, the chord, the chords that they used didn't like make. It, they made you go, yeah. oh, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. But, but not like, what are they doing? Not like, yeah, like what yeah. song is this yes. now? Like, they it's taste the melody taste. changed it. <laughs> yeah. So I, I know you said like uh, we we don't need the whiteboard. Yeah. But do you think we could grab the whiteboard and then like maybe just write like the chord substitutions that you use for mm. G and C? Sure. Because it's 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 like those are the two chords of the song mostly, and then you're kind of just picking what substitution you want to switch it out for. Like ah, oh, I want to play this one instead for here and this one for here. So yeah. And actually, funny enough, um, Steven Espanola, who was also there. Um, for the concert and for some workshops like during his workshop he did something very similar he talked about something very similar where mm -hmm. he I think they were go talking about Hene Hene Koaka yeah and he um, talked about like the Kauna of yeah. it and um, and so like when you are doing something like where you're gonna change the song mm -hmm. um, kind of like that you have to Keep in mind, like what the song is about. It's true. You know yeah. what, um, and and kind of your figure out your interpretation of the lyrics. Mm. Um, what what the background, <laughs> like you know, if you know the lyrics, uh -huh. you can kind of think about like uh, the background leading up to the song. Mm. Yeah. Um, in a different way, and and then you could formulate your chords around what you think the background. For right. yourself, your your interpretation of it would be. So. I would tell you. I would say this too. Um, somebody that Kahai had mentioned a long time ago on one of these. We were talking about things we've seen on Adam Neely. Mm -hmm. He did a really awesome reharmonization video on the Ariana Grande song "Thank mm -hmm. You Next." Uh -huh. If nobody, if you haven't seen that, I suggest you watch that. He explains it probably better than any of us could. Uh, about what he's doing and why he's doing it. Yeah. Now, not yeah. To, and that's really the more important part. The rules of reharmonizing or chord substitution, there are plenty of rules, but they're not necessarily like super difficult. Yeah. But why you do it, like the why that's of it, more important. that's a lot more yeah. important. And that's a lot, that takes a lot more musical maturity mm -hmm. to do, you know, to yeah. understand why you're changing it from this to this because. I've heard a lot of reharmonization exercises where people just everything's major becomes minor and everything minor becomes major. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just the uh... And 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 you know they they're reharmonizing on a purely technical level which technically works but at the same time doesn't work because it throws the song so far out into left field 
that the song doesn't make sense anymore. Mm-hmm. It, it's kind of just your your choice, right? Like how far away from it do you want it to get where yeah. people are going to have a harder time recognizing the original song. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, like, a simple change would be change it from major to minor. Mm-hmm. A simple change would be put a seventh on it. I gave some examples. So here's the... Um, the, the ones that we've, u- we've been using. So G, we can substitute a G major 7 for it. An E minor, B minor 7 slash G, which mm-hmm. would be the G at the top. And a G minor. Then we have uh, A minor, C major 7, and C minor for substitution for C. So here's some examples. Instead of G, C, G, C for that, you know, Wahine, mm-hmm. Ilikea, Ikapo, Leo, Molokai, right here in C. So we could use G, then A minor, which is part of our, uh, you know, block of uh, C substitutions here. To a B minor, which is part of our this B minor seven slash G here, and then to the C major seven. So that's one way to kind of do it. You can also do G to C minor to G minor to the A minor, which we you know which we showed, and do G major seven to C minor to B minor to C. So there's just, you can basically use any one of these chords to create different or to uh, to introduce new characters in in your in your story, kind of like how. Uh, how Mike was saying. So I, I thought when you asked me like, oh, do you need me to come in like tomorrow last? Because I saw you last night at the show. I'm like, yes, yes, I do need you to come in because I have something I really <laughs> want to talk to you about. It is definitely this. All right. So yeah, like uh, Mike mentioned uh, the Adam Neely video with mm-hmm. the him reharmonizing. Yeah. And there's a part of it that I really like where he says like. I can give you all the music theory to explain why this chord works with this chord. But at the end of the day, I picked that chord because I like how it sounded. <laughs> I like how it sounded in yeah. place of that one. Yeah. So it's like almost and it really like people mm-hmm. this this might scare people because it sounds so daunting. But you can almost reharmonize with any chord. Yeah. Like you can reharmonize with any chord and then you can use any justification for mm-hmm. why it works with this chord. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh well, like these two notes are the same as this note, or mm-hmm. like Oh, the bass note is actually the same as this, right. their bass so, note, so it's like that. Now, the one Where, thing to remember about that, though, is that the further out you go... Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I was the say, more, like, Where does it end? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And really, there is no ending to it. You can yeah. you can reharmonize Twinkle Twinkle Little Star mm-hmm. into the most mm-hmm. dissonant oblivion you can right. want. And, However, you have to remember, on a more practical level... If you're reharmonizing these things for you to perform, yeah, it has to be recognized. I mean, <laughs> think about your audience. I mean, yeah, yeah, you had he, Abe and Cynthia and Lenny had an audience of very, very educated, very accomplished mm-hmm. ukulele players, and they got probably the effect that they wanted, which was everyone like, "What are they doing? Yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> that's the, amazing!" <laughs> the layman audience. To the layman audience, they might just be like. Oh, that's weird sounding. Yeah, I like, no, I like it, it, but I like or, it. I, I feel like some of the audience <laughs> didn't didn't even catch, didn't even it. know yeah. the original song. So that's they, true. Yeah. That's like, true. If they don't know the original. Yeah, they just figure like, that's the way it goes. Oh, that's a that's a nice song. Yeah, but you know, think about think about that in the sense: if you really want to take it off into space, mm-hmm. that's fine. Experiment at with home, at home. <laughs> yeah, maybe play it for some of your friends, so, so it doesn't go so far out that you're. Mm. Especially one really good one is play. Try and play the song for a friend who doesn't really know that song, mm. and then play for one that really does. Yeah, that's basically it, what happened. He, because if they had the audience of both, <laughs> because if because if yeah. both people in the meet in the middle and be like, yeah, we really like that. Yeah. Then you knew. Then you know you've you done a, you a good something. thing. Mm-hmm. If if mm-hmm. one of them goes, because because the truth is, if someone really knows a song and you've reharmonized it like super extensively. If the person who knows that song goes like, I don't know, man, that's yeah, yeah that's yeah. weird. That's yeah. not then the, probably means the person who has right, no experience right. with that song yeah. will be even more confused by what you yeah, just did. Yeah. You know? It, it kinda yeah, it just it depends on what you're like going for yeah. and what your definition of success is, because there definitely are like people who will reharmonize things to try and make it sound as different from the original song mm-hmm. as they possibly yeah. can and that's what they're going for yeah, but they're going for the shock value or yeah whatever. <laughs> but then if not if yeah. you're trying to get like where people can recognize like oh this yeah. sounds like the original but it sounds a little bit different so it's right. kind of catching my ear like yeah, yeah. If, i mean any almost any song you can reharmonize it mm-hmm. 
to unrecognizability. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, can, you, you can reharmonize the crap out of stuff. Yeah, well, you can. <laughs> you know, I mean, we could take Vahini Ilikea, and if I want to use like really like big chord extensions mm-hmm. and and really far away, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and really far away uh, chord substitutions. You know, I could make it almost, un- I could make it unrecognizable except mm. for the melody, except that I could also make the chords so clashing <laughs> that you, so, that's not what Danny you hear. Danny Elfman you, action. You, 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 <laughs> wants to hear it. Yeah. Your ear, well, you know, funny <laughs> enough, Danny Elfman's actually a good example of someone who can use very dissonant harmony. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And make it in sound. A, <laughs> in, a, in a manner that doesn't sound like it's dissonant harmony. Yeah, yeah. It's, because like when we were working on that piece, you were like, wait, why are these notes all right next to each other? Yeah, well, once you play it together, you're like, okay, I see why. <laughs> I exactly. See the purpose of why it's... And, you, and you, know, you realize that it wouldn't have had the same effect had we, like, took, moved, took out uh, one. <laughs> moved one up or down an octave yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. It wouldn't have worked. It has to be close to... It has to, to be close to get that weird dissonance mm-hmm. that he likes. But when you're listening, when you're listening to The Simpsons... Yeah, you, you don't hear it. You you you, you don't you, you don't register it yeah. as mm-hmm. oh that ba ba bum ba 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 da da da. You don't register that as being like oh those are crazy notes. They shouldn't yeah. be next to each other until you put them on a piece of paper and you try and play them and then you totally it's see like it. Kind of, yeah, it's, it's like not, wants to like resolve uh, resolve like half step away from each other. <laughs> but it does, and yeah. then the part about it that may, that makes it so keeps the interest of your ears. It doesn't resolve. It doesn't ever yeah, re- yeah. like those like those. <laughs> they never really resolve anywhere. They just hang in the air, completely dissonant and just that weird dissonance in your ear, and it mm-hmm. never resolves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know the it's closest he some... gets to resolve is like right at the end mm-hmm. when you hear bum 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 bump, <laughs> and that's as close as you get to resolution in that song. Yeah, but somehow I... he 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 made it listenable. Yeah, yeah. so that's that's the point. I, I mean, think in the end, right? Like, absolutely. yeah, and I mean, to have you people know, appreciate your music. Going, going back to you know what what Abe did, it was great because, um, like like we mentioned, the audience, you know, the audience loved it. They're like, oh, this is this is a cool song. The audience who weren't quite familiar with Wahine Likeo, but then us who were familiar with it and us who were like musicians saw the genius. You know, yeah. everyone was just like, man, that everybody, is, yeah, it, we, everyone is. Afterwards, we were all talking yeah. about it. That was aims at a different level, man. Like he's <laughs> just he's so out there. Even that sparkly Berkeley degree, you know? that's why he gets <laughs> to play. <Berkeley. laughs> that's why he gets to play at like Carnegie Hall and stuff, which he told us about. He's like, "Well, I didn't play at the main hall." I'm like, "What? <laughs> I haven't even I've, seen the place. I haven't even like <laughs> put my eyes on it. They don't even let me in." And you played in one of the one of the rooms and stuff, and he's talking about like playing at you know like at the Disney Concert Hall in, in LA or whatever. I'm like, man. What? Where haven't you played, Abe? Like, and he's super <laughs> humble about it. So yeah. Actually, Shout probably pr- pretty close to nowhere at this point. Yeah, man. He's so good. Yeah. I mean, Abe is a It would be kind of... It. Actually, that'd be kind of an interesting question. Abe, if you watch this or listen to this, <laughs> send us a message. Tell us where you have not performed or where like you'd to. like to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What would you like to perform Whoa. next? Great Wall of yeah. China. <laughs> well, 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 keep that like as a question. Like, If we ever get him on, we'll, we'll yeah, definitely yeah. ask him. When that. we get him on. Yeah. When, when, we get him, <laughs> when, when we get him on. He's here's... He's here on Kauai often enough that we should have gotten yeah. him by it's now. Once it's once a year. It's once a year. Steven, too. All like, Angels, Jasper. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Steven, yeah. Steve, because like, Steven's like, I was just on Kauai. Yeah, I wish family like, here. Yeah, and he's like, I wish yeah. I, I did something with you guys. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, next time, like, make sure, for sure. Like, we, we want to hang out. That's really cool, though. Thanks for kind of, you know, helping us out with that. <laughs> because there are, like, a bunch of different ways that you can go. Uh, one more kind of question. Um, going going back to like how far you know how far can you kind of take it? So if I was in G, right, and then I go to A minor, mm-hmm. could so that A minor is already a substitution. Can I make a substitution to that substitution? Yes, absolutely. So like instead of A minor, could I make it A major? You try it right now and see what <laughs> oh happens. Oh my jeez. Oh, okay. What? You, it's surprising that you haven't thought about. No, this. I, I mean it just. Cause I'm I'm so used to playing by the rules, <laughs> you know. This is this is what I do for every song challenge. Really? Yeah. Jeez. Wahine ilikeo. No, it doesn't. I no, mean, you like, could re- it you could, could revoice but... it. You could revoice it. it. I guess. Yeah. I mean, the answer is 
Let me think. I guess, that, I guess you could. That, that's, <laughs> well, that's that's what we were talking about. It's getting farther away from the original. Mm. That's why you don't mm. like it. Yeah. But then, it like, that's the, you know, justification you can make yeah. is that, oh, it's a reharmonization of a reharmonization almost, too. Oh, so. It's like, it's Inception. It's like musical <laughs> yeah. Inception. Oh, my jeez. All right. So, thank you so much, Mike. Thank you for, uh, for working that out with us and stuff. I just really needed to write those down. So, for those of you folks who wanted to see that in writing, here it is. Uh, it can be summed up in this. I was going to say it, too. Uh, if people want to check out, like, good... Uh, kind of demos of reharmonization mm -hmm. De definitely check out like soundtracks or mm -hmm. like from you know movies mm -hmm. games or like um uh even musicals and stuff because mm -hmm. there's like motifs right and that's like a theme a running theme yeah. through the whole soundtrack that they're trying to keep but like then they'll change it for the um based on the scenario yeah yeah, yeah. and so it can be like originally it can sound like happy but then they'll like play it for when like the hero's down, yeah. like you know, at the worst parts. But it's they they really try to make it intentionally, like yeah. for yeah. each part. Right. By the I way, mean, just playing video games and stuff, you got the but then like when you know there there's like something kind of sad going on. Dum, dum. Dun, mm. da, 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 da. With totally yeah. different really, chords, like, yeah, the mind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Try an A seven. Or the, so G Love to over A7. Yeah, Revoice that song. Oh. Yeah, mute the G string. Do that. Uh, something else. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a that's a five of five uh -huh. substitution. A five of five, by the way, is think about the key you're in. Go to the fifth note. Think of yeah, that as of the that. key <laughs> and make that it. Yeah. it. It's what we also call secondary dominant. It's a mm -hmm. dominant seventh chord that doesn't necessarily feel like you're going to go back to mm -hmm. the one chord. So an <laughs> A7 there would, would have been a five of five. Yeah, the dominant second we use for... <laughs> yeah, the vamp. Yeah, the vamp. <laughs> Yeah. But thank you, thank you, Mike. Yeah. Thank you for uh, kind of nerding out with us you know, <laughs> on this because really, it it was it was kind of a really cool moment like backstage because I never get that get that moment with people anymore. You know where it's like, man, did you guys hear that? That's that's really something cool, and and everybody kind of shared it. Usually people are like, oh, oh I'm concentrating on my set or what. You know, like it's I, I you know I've been in those kind of backstages where like, oh, it wasn't it was okay or what. You know, or like. Can we just take a take a moment to pause and just enjoy just like music. enjoy like Abe's genius for a <laughs> second, you know? Like, yeah. can we just get over ourselves and like praise our fellow youth player for doing an amazing so, job on a, on an arrangement? So it's mm -hmm. kind of like that because we're friends. It was like an you know it was a it was an easy kind of moment to share with everybody. Yeah. So something too also like somebody in the chat, Renee said, mm -hmm. uh, "How did they practice this? They live pretty far away from each other now, right?" But uh, like also like mm -hmm. when you're kind of doing stuff like this, mm -hmm. like if you trust whoever is doing it, yeah. and like you said, like Cynthia just had to sing the same like melody, right? Mm -hmm. So she trusts like Abe yeah. and like Lenny. I would trust Abe with my musical yeah. life. <laughs> yeah, and so it's like you just you just know what part you're doing, right. and then you, it's like, oh, the, that guy yeah. can do whatever he wants. He can yeah, like yeah. put out. Also, uh, I mean, it's not like he couldn't have just recorded a quick run through. That's on true. his phone and yeah, just sent like it to her. Yeah. Well, they they yeah. were like doing a run through before, like during sound check. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, what I mean is though, like he could have just put his phone there, played one chorus of it with the with the new chords, just and she, yeah, yeah, she yeah she sent it to her on her phone, and she could have just anywhere. listened to it and started yeah. to sing it, so she could mm -hmm. sing over this yeah. new chord progression. That, and right. that's not hard at all. Yeah, yeah. And, and that that like that when they were rehearsing during sound check. It's like that's probably all they need. Like, yeah, and just to run it once. Yeah, yes. and they yeah. they they're so comfortable with each other that they mm -hmm. they know like oh whatever you do yeah. it's like gonna work. Yeah. I right. trust you. I mean, if you know. you're wor working with like someone as high level as like as Abe and stuff, you just put your trust in them. Like, yeah, it's one of those things that you you know that he's not gonna like write a crappy arrangement. Yeah, part, you know? and, and like like we we're talking about how Abe like he's mm -hmm. he'll like start to incorporate some like yeah. substitutions but not go like way off the bandwagon yeah. like yeah he's well, not he, gonna... he also knows that if he if he goes like super crazy on that he will probably lose mm -hmm. the yeah. other two because that's not really the that's not really the world they work in where mm -hmm. it's like yeah. 
in crit like if he's doing like a set at the baked potato in LA mm -hmm. with like a jazz quartet. Yeah. Yeah, he can he can go to the stratosphere because the guys <laughs> he's playing with are yeah, used to working in that vernacular. Yeah. They're gonna take, yeah. you know, Stella by Starlight and reharmonize it into just yeah. <laughs> craziness. Yeah. But two things mm -hmm. about that. Number one, I, I don't know I don't know Lenny that mm -hmm. well. But I I know I've heard Cynthia's music and she's much more of a melodic, mm -hmm. you know, ukulele mm -hmm. player and stuff like that. She's not really into like that crazy like 18 steps yeah. away harmony and stuff mm -hmm. like that. That's not really what she does. You know, so you wouldn't want to like drop that in her lap and go like, well, figure it out. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I don't know Lenny right. really, so I don't know where where his musical mm -hmm. but you know, it's the one thing that I hear a lot, you know, like jazz players are the ones that can just overcomplicate things. Overcomplicate <laughs> things beyond because, <laughs> you know, to study jazz at a high level that knowledge of every option that you have is has to be studied. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like when I was in jazz improv class and jazz harmony class, it was like, you have a C and a G7. Mm. Here are the 15,000 things you can do. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's cool. That's cool. And, All right. <laughs> you know, most people don't have to deal with that. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So we had a great time uh, this weekend. And, you know, th there was definitely a lot of like topics of discussion. And this was just one of like the many topics of discussion and it's 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 really cool so if you guys managed to go to the show uh you guys saw a, an awesome treat you guys were were treated some a great night of music really like everyone was everyone was great craig and sarah did an awesome set i mean they're you know they're always professional they're always really mm -hmm. good um abe did an awesome set by him you know by himself he did uh he had a bon jovi song that he recently <laughs> uh, arranged he did living on a prayer i heard i saw he put a video of that yeah yeah so it was it was awesome lenny cynthia and and abe We've been talking about for the past like 30 minutes now so everyone did a, an it, awesome job if, if you have chance to uh to go see these guys live anywhere not necessarily this festival but anywhere you're guaranteed a good show yeah i think we're, and i think we're gonna try and post some videos or some things from the whole weekend you know oh, yeah. like little surprises. tidbits and stuff. <laughs> yeah so, so uh yeah because you guys got um clips of not just the you know not just not just the festivals but some of the workshops and, and some of the concert and stuff so you guys will Come up with a little video that features all that. Yeah, we had, yeah, yeah. Some and cool we uh, we filmed a bunch of other stuff too. So stay tuned for that. I think Steven put up a little teaser on his Instagram. Steven Espanol put up that uh, we're 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 doing a you know we're doing a lesson with him. So keep your eyes peeled. You know for that. If you guys are into like Hawaiian music, Steven is definitely a master. You know at uh, at singing falsetto and doing some Hawaiian music. And we did something super fun that I'm very 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 excited for. And the people who were who were there for the filming are super excited for as well. So we'll. We'll share that when the time comes, okay? Uh, have a great one, everyone. So on behalf of Kahai, Aaron, and Mike, we'll see you folks next time. Have a great one. Aloha.